I am so excited for my next guest. She's an award-winning mathematician, an engineer by trade, and a technology enthusiast. She's worked for companies like BP, Google, Deloitte, and now working in the startup space on energy projects. She's also a writer, a speaker, a convener, a lover of people, and frankly, the ultimate sparkler. I am so inspired by her, and I know that you will be too. Welcome back. This is Visibility, the show that shines a light on the marketplace successes of women on color in the UK. And I am here again with another amazing, amazing guest, the inspiring Vome Agogovia. Thank you for coming to the show. Welcome. We've been trying to get you on for a while. So I'm so excited. <laughs> so excited for this conversation. But thank you for coming. Um, so Vome is a lot of things and has her hands in a lot of pots. A mathematician, an engineer works in the startup environment. She's an author of an amazing book called Everyone Deserves <laughs> to Sparkle, which is available on Amazon. And we're going to talk a lot about this book today and all of this stuff was really actually sums up a lot of who she is um, and what she's really going to do really on this earth. Um, so excited to talk about this. Um, so yeah, welcome again. Um, I always start with, you know, sort of childhood and you know mm -hmm. family and stuff i think people say you know the best place to start is from the beginning okay. but what i actually want to do is start from your book oh, um <laughs> actually going through it and i've tabbed it and i really read it and gone through it. <laughs> well done. Um, i thought it was a fantastic fantastic very well written book and it just went through um a lot and i think one of the things that i picked up was uh about just how influential your family, your sisters, um, particularly your mom. You talk so eloquently yeah. about your mom, um, and just how, inf how much they helped guide you to yeah. the point that you are now. So, so, can you just walk us through and like our audience, me and our audience around, like where you were, or the different pieces that came together to when you when you wrote this, and how old were you when you wrote this? I was twenty three when you were published. Yeah. What was I doing at twenty three? <laughs> I don't know, but um, 23, amazing. So for you to be 23 and write something like this um, makes me think you're a very, very special person. So yeah, talk us through sort of how we got to this point and, and the choices that you made to get here. Okay, so I have three sisters. So we're a family of six and we're four girls and everyone always like said, oh, you guys are four girls and we all have names starting with V. Oh, yeah. So we, quite, we grew up in a very nurturing environment. Yeah. Like our parents were very like, for the fact we're four girls, yeah. very, very attentive. Yeah. Yeah. And so although four of us are similar, we're kind of different at the same time. Yeah. And our, our parents have always made sure that we all knew we're special individually, mm -hmm. even though we had similarities. Mm -hmm. um, another thing my mom did, she made sure people didn't compare us. So always made sure everyone knew you were special in mm -hmm. your own way. So I think that's kind of started how I felt about me being special as how I am yeah. as a person. Yeah. And my family did a lot to make me become like this because I remember I said I, when I grew up, like I used to just play, I was very playful mm -hmm. and I just wasn't focusing on school. Yeah. I was just playing, playing. I was doing well, but not great. I find that hard uh, to believe. I was okay. just playing all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and then my mom sat me down once, I think I was in, which would be year nine, so I was like 12. And she sat me down and she said, oh, Vome, you need to not be comfortable being mediocre. Mm -hmm. Don't be comfortable being average. You need to actually do your best yeah. and those words really sat inside, inside yeah. my mind yeah. and even up to now i think about it all the time but was it that she felt like you were being mediocre when she said it or she just mm -hmm. thought actually this is a good point for me to tell my young daughter that yeah. this is a good life lesson <laughs> i think she knew i wasn't pulling my weight because okay. to be fair i'll come back from school and i'm just playing right. i just never really used to study yeah and she could tell that i wasn't particularly trying academically okay. and i think she thought i started to like settle and just right. be okay just coasting right and so she sat me down and said no just don't coast actually anywhere you are do your best yeah. try to do your yeah. best and she just put that in me and mm. i think that really really helped for yeah. where i am today even writing the book everything because yeah. i always just think about that so i think my sister's examples 
our nurturing family my dad is very hard working yeah. very supportive just all of that put together just made me always believe i could do anything basically yeah yeah there's a there's a chapter in your book very early on where you talked about um failing maths yeah <laughs> and i find that really strange because obviously now you're actually like an, yeah. an award-winning mathematician yeah um so failing math and this obviously this conversation you talked about with your mom yeah um and where she kind of woke you up basically yeah. um what were some of like you know when people talk about stem and talk about you know women in sciences and that type yeah. of thing is it uh do you learn it or is it just something that you're born with I think people have natural flares for right. things, so like gifts and like subjects. And mm -hmm. even when I speak to like people in school, students, yeah. I tell them you have natural flares for certain subjects. Mm -hmm. But I also believe that you can learn yeah. to be great at certain subjects. So I think it's a mixture of nature and nature. nature yeah. Where, I mean, someone that had a natural flair for it would get it instantly. Mm -hmm. But if you put in the work, you can also learn Develop, to become yeah. good at it. So I feel like I had a flair for maths, but I don't think I developed it so mm -hmm. i wasn't trying but once i keyed into it it became like it second kind of, nature yeah. okay. so i feel like sometimes people just especially if you're not encouraged certain girls you can think oh uh math is not for me or mm -hmm. chemistry or physics mm -hmm. you're not trying but if you try you may actually find that you don't have the flair for it or yeah. you do actually have the flair for it mm -hmm. so i think it's determining whether it's that you're not great at it or if it's your mm -hmm. environment mm -hmm. that is preventing you from okay. finding out and are any of your other sisters in the sciences yes yeah, so out of four of us three of us so one is a doctor okay um the other one is a um, electrical engineer right and then me and then my other sister is an accountant so she's not in sciences but yeah. she's really good with numbers as yeah. well so okay. yeah so numbers are definitely a thing around yeah. your house but funny enough both my parents are social sciences oh, humanities okay. so okay. none of them are into sciences but yeah um, so this is where my dad comes in. My dad is very particular about what you want to study and he would support you in any degree you choose. Yeah. Um, so for me, like my sisters always knew what they wanted to do from 12, 13. They all knew what they wanted okay. to do. I had no clue because I'm that kind of person that I like doing different things. So when you're like that, sometimes you struggle to know yeah. what you want to yeah. do. So I got like, to the, like, what's that? Uh, master, master of none or jack of all trades. Is, I see. Exactly. Yeah. So I picked maths, further maths, chemistry and physics in A-levels because that's what I liked. Wow. But I didn't know what I wanted to do with, with it. it. So mm -hmm. I was just like, okay. And then my dad started having a conversation with me. What do you want to do? I'm like, I like maths. Maybe I'll do maths. And he's like, okay, that's fair if you want to do that. But have you like explored mm -hmm. different things? And he said, okay, I think you should do work experience in different companies to actually mm -hmm. see what you can do with awesome. it. So I did. I worked for insurance companies. I did the ExxonMobil. I did different things. Yeah. And then after the experience, I really liked what the chemical engineers were doing okay. at ExxonMobil. And I thought, okay, I can study this and I can still do most things I can do in maths yeah. with chemical engineering. Mm -hmm. But if I do maths, I can be an engineer. So that was my mindset um, to okay. pick in that. And I thought, okay. so I was thinking ahead of a career. Yeah. Anything I can do in maths, I can do with chemical mm -hmm. engineering. Yeah, yeah. And that's kind of how I chose okay. chemical okay. engineering. My dad guided me on that path, but he's supportive of anything you want to do. Okay. And he, ha he loves his girls. He tells us, like, yeah. we're like 10 sons. Anything you want to do. <laughs> he doesn't see a male career, female yeah, career, yeah. anything you want to do is it's okay. fine yeah so just going to specifics you know for some of our um what viewers who are really thinking about engineering yeah. what is it specifically about engineering that really gets you going where you think you know this is this is what i want to be doing for most people that love engineering is the problem solving okay like engineering is a degree where you need to think creatively creatively oh, you need to use creatively. creativity yeah. <laughs> creatively sorry you need to think creatively but you also like you're solving a problem so it presents a problem to you yeah and you need to analyze it break it down and think of a creative way to solve the problem mm -hmm. and a lot of people that love engineering are people that love to solve problems yeah. so you're not just seeing an issue but you're thinking of ways that you can kind of make things better mm -hmm. so i think a lot of people that like engineering is that mindset that you kind of go with it and yeah. you enjoy it throughout your degree and i mean we finish engineering and go into other careers yeah. but you still have that thing behind you in yeah. your mind says, yeah. yeah when you move on i mean i work in finance and yeah. some of my the best bosses um leaders that i've seen are both the engineers actually yeah. and it's that thing of being able to take um a very wide 
area or a very yeah. wide issue and just break it down into like solvable mini you know and just kind of work logically yeah um to but on the flip side of that does that mean that you are there's you know for you is pretty much black and white it's very mathsy are there gray mm -hmm. areas as we think about problem solving where like you can actually bring social skills and social sciences to play yeah they, they are gray areas. so you think about it logically but then they also make us think about it in the real world context mm -hmm. so and things in the real world are in black and white yeah. so over our engineering degree we took management courses we took especially in chemical engineering you had to take other courses as well to make sure that you're also thinking about it in the real world context yeah um, and then for me because i'm not just sciencey but i also like writing and other things yeah. like that so i tend to think beyond just the solving of the problem yeah. but how would that apply to someone's life yeah. like personally or in the real world so for me you yeah. talked earlier about your um, the courses you did at for A levels. Yeah. So remind us again what those were, um, and then also were you targeting any specific grades as you were thinking about picking your your courses at school? Okay, so I did maths, for the maths, chemistry, and physics. Okay. I picked them because that's what that I enjoy. Much what I pretty yeah. much love doing them. And then, like I said, when I did the work experiences that my dad organized yeah. for me. I then realized that, okay, I want to do chemical engineering. Mm. So at that stage, I think I was 17, I actually wrote a five-year plan. <laughs> so that's, that's what's going to help. I wrote, and that's uh, yeah. in your book! I wrote a five-year <laughs> plan. And then I said, okay, I want to do chemical engineering. What grades do I need to get for the universities I wanted to go to? I wanted to go to one of the top five universities. So I'd never really been... Any, I didn't have a particular one in mind, but I knew I wanted to go to either UCL, Imperial, or Cambridge, one oh. of them. So I thought, okay, yes. Um... So that was one of my goals, and I checked what grades they wanted. They wanted ASTAR AA. So my first goal was to get ASTAR AA. Second goal was to go to one of those universities. Third one was to do as many internships as possible. I had a fourth and a fifth one yeah. as well. And then, so I applied, and then I got into UCL. Um, in terms of UCL, what I would say is that when I went there, I wasn't like particularly thinking of anyone in mind, but when I went to UCL, I felt at home. I don't know how to explain okay. it. Okay. Um, so I ended up getting ASTAR AA and ended up going to UCL. Amazing. But when I speak to um, students now, one thing I tell them is that there are many good universities. Yeah. And then if you have the list of the ones you want to go to, yeah. different universities actually work for different okay. people. Okay. Um, I think having gone to university, university now and seeing different people in different environments, mm -hmm. I know UCL was the right choice because right. it suited me in terms of the culture. Mm -hmm. So I always say, think about good universities mm -hmm. that you want to go to and also go there and just see what it's like and see if it suits you yeah. as a person. And, and how can um, students find the right information in terms of what universities are out there? What grades they, did it, I need to get okay. to get into this course or this yeah. uni? What might suit me? What's the best way for them to research okay. this? So use Google as much as possible. Google is your friend. It's your friend. Uh -huh. League tables. Um, even for different courses, it will tell you that league tables that tell you the good universities for certain courses, the general league okay. tables in the UK, and then the one for maths, the one for chemical engineering. Right. There's the like the world league table as well. I think it's the Times that has one as well for a global league table. So I went through all of that. Um, I went on the university website and checked their entry requirements. Mm -hmm. And also, I went for taster courses. So that's how I went to different universities. So I did a taster course at Cambridge for maths, actually, when I was still thinking about doing maths. Mm -hmm. You sit in your lectures, you see what it's like. Okay. Yeah, I did oh, one for I UCL. Yeah, Very a taster nice. course that women in engineering. I did that for two days. Um, that when I experienced UCL. So you don't get the full experience of the universities, but you get a day a or two of, in the yeah. classes. I did that different places and then i could tell okay i feel like ucl and cambridge are the ones i thought okay this kind of i like how this feels mm. so people should just go for things experience things go out mm. there and i think that would that would help <laughs> definitely yeah. so now we're in ucl mm -hmm. um you mentioned before that you were doing this you knew what you liked but you yeah. didn't know what you wanted to do yeah. to do you had done some internships which had yeah. helped maybe narrow it down and so now you're in school how are you how did you go about planning for life after school? Planning for life after. Okay, so I did work experiences as well. Okay. So in my first year, I applied for different things. I 
until the spring week at Bank of America, actually. Okay. Um, after that week, I knew banking wasn't for me. Yeah. I just knew it wasn't for me. I, I just didn't, I don't know, I didn't just feel... I didn't get yeah. it. I didn't. Um, so I just, yeah. <laughs> what area did you do it in? Um... Sales and trading, actually. Okay. And I just thought, nah, this, this is not me. Um, so I said, okay, let me try something else. In my second year, I then did BP, which is more like okay. what I studied. Yeah. And I oh, this is nice. I like BP. And what area in BP did you? So I was in the uh, sales and trading as well. So okay. for oil and gas sales and trading. So that was fine. Um, but I thought, okay, let me have more experiences. Mm -hmm. In my third year, I then applied for, I wanted an unconventional company. Cause I just wanted to see what it would be like. Yeah. And then I got Google. Oh. Um, that, that year was actually funny because I applied to so many things that year. Yeah. And I just wasn't getting them. But in previous years, I would get it easily. Yeah. And I, just, I was so frustrated. I was yeah. thinking, what's going on? Yeah. And then when I was about to give up, I literally then got a reply from Google. And in a week, I got, I got the oh, offer. Fantastic. And I felt like it was just being held up yeah. for that, basically. And what, um, what, what area in Google were you? So it was business intelligence, strategy, and governance. So oh, it's ve like so very, 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 very different. Yeah, yeah, very, very different okay. from what I've done. But how did that then tie into... But I guess you said, as you said, your, your appeal for engineering is problem solving. Problem so not solving. necessarily yeah. working as an engineer. Exactly. Okay. And I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I was trying different things out yeah. to kind of figure out. And I like Google. It was fun. But then I thought, okay, this doesn't really tie in with, like you said, mm. my engineering. Yeah. I want something more applicable. And was this an internship? Or? It was like a four-month internship. Okay. So it okay. was long over the long summer. Okay. And then I said, okay, people say that if you're not really sure, maybe you should go into consulting. So I'm like, okay, I'll go into consulting, try different industries and see kind of yeah. what I like. So I got a graduate um, offer at Deloitte okay. for awesome. consulting. Nice. I did it for a year. And I think after that year, I then realized the industry I was passionate about was energy. Okay. So Verme, you are um, now working for a startup. You mentioned mm -hmm. Bob Energy, um, an amazing company doing really amazing stuff in the energy space. Okay. What makes the startup world so exciting? I have so many <laughs> young people that yeah. just want to quit and go and do startup. You know, what makes it so cool? First of all, startups are fun. <laughs> so yeah. it's not as formal. Yeah. Everyone in, tends to be really relaxed. Yeah. You get to know the people at work. You have fun with them. Mm -hmm. They tend to get have a lot of perks as well. Okay. And I think that really attracts people. Like you think yeah. of Facebook and Google when you think of startups, yeah. like when they were younger. Yeah. But also why I'm actually really enjoying working at a startup is the responsibility. Okay. So the level of responsibility I have at work now, the different things I do, I wouldn't have that kind of responsibility if in a bigger a firm. organization. Yeah, and literally my role, they say, is like 10 departments in a different company. Yeah. So I'm doing so much, which is a lot of work, yeah. but I'm learning and growing a lot. Yeah. And I think that's my own attraction. To but startups. would startups also have like training budgets and that type of thing? The things that yeah. make larger organizations yeah. interesting. Interesting. Yeah, so we have a training budget. It wouldn't be as robust yeah. as a larger organization. But the on the work on the work you're doing every day mm. you're probably learning more hands-on stuff yeah than practical, if it was a practical yeah. stuff than just a course for example so mm. i mean it has its disadvantages yeah. but the things you learn the responsibility the way you can grow very fast yeah. is it's quite interesting i'll say okay so yeah. now you're working for a startup but you also have a startup yeah. which is super interesting so you have you are one quarter of yeah. dvs <laughs> yeah um so uh, you know your social enterprise or your your business with your sisters mm. um tell us a little bit about that okay so it's very different from when you're working for a startup and when you're starting a company <laughs> like it's a very different thing but yeah so we dvs we literally just like cooking because yeah. my dad cooks we grow up with my dad always cooking for christmas that's and, odd normally yeah. always people say my mom cooks yeah, my, like my, my dad. dad loves to cook oh, very nice. so we all grew up cooking a lot with my dad and so we just used to cook a lot and then we started blogging about it and then mm -hmm. so many people started following the blog mm -hmm. and talking about it and then my sister's husband was doing his birthday like a party and then we just decided to bottle chapman like we just got bottles made chapman put in the bottle as gift items okay and everyone started raving on about it and then we thought actually and you made that at home we made it at home okay. so we just but made you, chapman. you didn't have to seal the bottle we actually still we bought we oh, bought, we bought our bottles, bottles okay. and we sealed the bottles and we made it all professional but it was just for that his party it wasn't yeah. like anything but we do little things like that for people's our weddings yeah. and things and everyone was like, no, you have to do this professionally. You have to. And then we thought about it and thought, 
actually, actually why, yeah, not? why not yeah. but then we have to develop the chapman mm. because when people make it at home they use fanta and sprite mm. and all of that but you can't bottle that and sell it professionally yeah. so making the recipe took another two years or three years wow. before we could actually finalize it for it to be bottled and also tasting like chapman because people make chapman oh but sometimes days. the bottled ones don't taste like yeah. chapman and then yeah we started with chapman first and then now we do condiments okay so like rodo sauce which is like okay yeah, sauce. I've heard about that, we yeah. do um tea we have zobo tea yeah dvs tea and then we have other products that are coming zobo drink yeah. like so we're moving into different spaces we didn't think this is where it was going to go yeah. but then this is it's where we are now because yeah. we tried different things before. But and how has the public reception been? I know you did um, um, a stall which I came to yeah. um, around Liverpool Street yeah. area. Uh, but what's the reception been from the public since then? I think there's a buzz with West African food, food places yeah. these days, with Kui, London, and other yes. places. So people are quite fascinated. Like, oh wow, from West Africa, what does it taste like? Yeah. So I think we've actually gotten a lot of. As at five years ago, no. But in the recent, like last right. year, so okay. many people are more interested yeah. in West African yeah. products. So that's positive. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. And so what's the next step now for DVs? Um, so obviously new products in yeah. development. Are you seeking funding? Are you working with other organizations? Are you stocking in certain shops? Okay, so we are still, it's still four of us doing it. Yeah. And, but what we're doing now is that our strategy is to get it out into cafes, restaurants, okay. bars, airlines. So we are not thinking the big stores. Right. We're thinking more of strategy into even start of Bob Stocks, yes. Divis Chapman. Does it? Yeah, it does. So wow. th that is our strategy right now to get okay. into those spaces. So you, 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 just, you, you went to whoever is <laughs> responsible for that at your firm and said... I just gave it to the owners of my company to try because I work with them regularly. Yeah. So I just give them a button. I go, oh, wow, this is so nice. I think we should start stocking it and... Yeah, so we stopped. Wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I am yeah. floored by that. Okay, yeah. that's fantastic. That must make you so proud to yeah. see your product. Everyone like, loves yeah. it at work as well. So very nice. And do they buy for their houses and all of that? So, so we just started stocking it a month ago. Mm -hmm. So it's still new, but everyone's like, "Where can we get it?" And we're like, "Oh, you can get it on Amazon." Yeah. So yeah, we've gotten more orders from there as well. So yeah, yeah it's going. And, you, well. and your your back office is able to fulfill the orders. And, yeah, okay, yeah, we so can you have do enough. Hundreds of thousands of oh wow, bottles. yeah. Fantastic. We have a big okay bottling very, company we work with. Very very yeah. nice. Oh, I love that. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Okay, so oh wow, I'm I'm <laughs> still like kind of there thinking that's fantastic that you work for yeah. a company that actually stocks stocks your drinks. <laughs> um, okay, so what I what else are you then working on now? Because obviously I know you're busy. I'm not to be honest. I'm not expecting you working on anything else because. <laughs> Yeah, doing speaking events, yeah. working full time, doing um, DVs yeah. is more than enough. But mm -hmm. I'm sure you probably have other stuff that you're working on. Do you mind sharing that with us? Okay, so what I'm currently working on, two things right now. Uh, the first one, I'm working on something called Ignite Africa. Okay. So this is an energy thing. So it's helping to shape the future of energy in, in Africa. Africa. Yeah. And the concept is to host annual events in different African countries, getting the influencers in the energy space yeah. to meet together, to actually share with the public and people in that industry as well, yeah. what, what, what their yeah. plans are for the country. Yeah. Uh, so we'll start on that. We have a website, igniteenergyafrica.com. Awesome. Um, people are interested. We have a page and then we're going. So we're going to launch really soon. So that's what I'm working on. Secondly, I'm working on a second book called Thrive. This one is strategies and successes of no strategies and secrets of successful students. Okay. So this is for secondary school students, basically um, giving them tips. Very the book should be quick, easy to read on tips on how they could excel academically. Basically, yeah, I'm writing with someone else as well, um, Tunde Gaffa. So we're writing together. Okay, awesome. Well, that's fantastic. That's yeah. a lot of work, but um, how far have you gone with your book? So the book is, is written, it's, it's pretty, done. Okay. I just so need to publish, and... get it out there. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty much done. I, I haven't just pushed Put it out it. there. Yeah. Yeah. Not yet. But how, are you self-publishing? Yes, I am. Okay. Yes, okay. I am. And you prefer that, um, or did you get any interest from other publishers since you already have a book out? So um, I, I didn't even explore getting a right. publisher. Um I think I like the flexibility of it being 
yeah my, my own thing, my own own product, thing. Yeah. um in the future i i may then move into having a publisher but for now i think it works with what i'm trying to do yeah. and the brand i'm trying to create i have full flexibility over where my book goes mm. but with a publisher i may not have that yeah so yeah okay awesome and so you mentioned doing speaking events yeah. uh, when we started having a yeah. conversation. So how can people contact you either for speaking events, how can they contact okay. DVs for okay. products? You already mentioned Ignite Africa, but you can repeat the okay. contact information. Okay. So for speaking events, I have a website called everyone deserves to sparkle.com. Mm -hmm. You can contact me there. That's the name of my book. So everyone deserves to sparkle. Um, for Ignite Africa, that's igniteenergyafrica.com. You can contact me there. And then for DVs, that's DVs.com, which is D-V-E-E-S.com. Yeah, and that's it. Okay. So for the different, for different areas. <laughs> areas. Okay, so just signing out now, what is, like, what are your words of wisdom? I guess if I just think, what is the one thing, um, or two, or three, um, things that are innate in you that has mm -hmm. kind of helped push you along the way and that you think is still, you know, helping you out as you move on in your journey? Oh, wow. Okay. Um, I think the first one is having the real realization that everything I need to become whoever I'm meant to be is already in me. Awesome. So I don't try to go everywhere trying to, like, get things from everywhere. It's like, yeah. oh, it's already in me. I just need to develop, develop it. it yeah. um, the second thing is resilience because I, I realize that things don't always go as planned. Yeah. Even with DVs, even with the book, even there are always, like, details. There are always things that happen, but you just need to keep pushing and keep going and i think this ties into the third point that what will help you keep going is i always have this at the back of my mind that i am on this world i'm in this world to help set the world on fire wow. i'm here to make a difference in people's lives so that's what i always have behind my head when i'm trying to get things done when things don't go as planned so those three things i would say yeah. wow yeah. So there you have it. I can't even summarize this conversation because it's just so, so awesome. We talked about trying new things. We talked about discovering passion. We talked about, we talked about doing your own research. We talked about thriving in every area that you are in. We talked about knowing that everything that you need to succeed is in you. We talked about being resilient. And the last point that woman mentioned is that you are in this world to set this world on fire. So go ahead and set this world on fire. Thank you, Vomet, for joining us. Thank you for having me.